Hey everybody, it's Erin from practicepharmacy.com, the student pharmacist site for study resources and real world pharmacy examples. Today we're talking about rabies prophylaxis. Around 40,000 people a year receive post-exposure prophylaxis according to the CDC. Public health measures to vaccinate domestic animals in, in the United States have decreased the chances of human exposure to rabies. The CDC says that prior to 1960, most reported animal rabies cases were in domestic animals, but now greater than 90% of cases are in wildlife. But these wildlife cases act as reservoirs of the disease, and unvaccinated domestic animals may come in contact with the virus, contract the disease, and act as vectors to their human companions. So, when is prophylaxis used? If a person is bitten by a known dog, cat, or ferret, the ACIP, which is the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, recommends observing the offending animal for 10 days and only beginning prophylaxis if the animal develops symptoms of rabies. However, a bite by an unknown cat, dog, or ferret will almost always result in a recommendation for prophylaxis, and of course if the animal is known to be rabid, prophylaxis is indicated there. Other animals that should always be regarded as rabid, according to the ACIP, include skunks, raccoons, bats, foxes, coyotes, and most carnivores. Livestock, rodents, and rabbits, according to the Sanford Guide to Antimicrobial Therapy, almost never require post-exposure prophylaxis, but that would be a case-by-case decision made in consultation with a public health official. So, how is prophylaxis administered? The first step is to immediately and thoroughly wash the wound with soap and water. This has been shown to drastically reduce the chance of contracting the rabies. Then prophylaxis is split into two situations, those who've been previously vaccinated and those who have not. Vets and animal control officers will usually receive pre-exposure, a pre-exposure series of rabies vaccinations. Then they'll only require a two-part post-exposure series with the first dose given on the day of exposure, which is called day zero, and the second three days later, day three. The vaccination is a 1cc injection given intramuscularly in the deltoid area. It shouldn't ever be given in the gluteus because adequate antibody production may not occur at that administration site. For everyone else, post-exposure prophylaxis includes the same vaccination as for the vets and animal control officers, but it's given in a four-part series. The first dose is given on day zero, and then it's repeated on days three, seven, and 14. It's suggested that the same brand be used consistently for all doses. In addition to vaccination, the patient will also receive rabies immune globulin at a dose of 20 units per kilogram, and that's given only on day zero. What's important here is to infiltrate the dose around the wound as much as possible. It should not, never be given at the same site as the vaccine. If the exposed person is a child, these guidelines should still be followed. The only exception is that the vaccine can be administered in the outer aspect of the child's thigh. That's for infants and young children, but again, never in the gluteus. To demonstrate the math involved in calculating the immune globulin dose, let's say a 195-pound man comes to the ER after being bitten by a raccoon, so he needs rabies immune globulin. First, convert his weight to kilograms by dividing by 2.2. Then, 88.6 kilograms times 20 units per kilogram is about 1,773 units. And if you divide the number of units needed by 150 units per milliliter, you come up with 12 milliliters. 12 milliliters is infiltrated into the wound as much as possible, and the rest is given intramuscularly into the gluteus. That's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like more pharmacy-related content, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel and my daily drug email list, which you can find on my website at practicepharmacy.com. See you next time.